doing a transmission service on a 2011 Lexus ISF. Uh, today I plan on changing the filter and gasket, and it's a filter and gasket kit, as much fluid as I can get out, and I've got some extra tools, lots of instructions, and some extra parts. Um, nothing broken, just hit about 62,000 miles, and I guess in my history of owning cars, if you have an automatic transmission, you give it a service, roughly every 40 to 60. So here I'm at 62, I'm a little late, and uh, I know everybody says this is a sealed lifetime fluid unit and you shouldn't do it. Well, I, I just, I'm having a problem believing that. I guess lifetime is as long as it lasts until it blows up. So warranty being about 100,000 miles on this car, I'd like not have to replace my transmission at 100,000 since I have about a little under 40 left. So today we're going to take a shot at this. The worst I can do is ruin it and give it to my dealer and have them laugh at me. But I thought I'd kind of film this to give everybody a, an understanding of how to do it. I've, I've read through these instructions many, many times. I've talked to a lot of people online. And uh, we're going to go ahead and take a shot at this. And hopefully this helps everybody out there. So I'll, uh, I'll give you all of these different parts that I have. Uh, I'll put them in the description below, but at least I'll describe them real quick. So the parts you need to do this are real simple. Um, I am going to be using Toyota brand ATF WS or World Standard Automatic Transmission Fluid. Um, it says I need about three and change quarts. Uh, this is the filter kit and gasket kit. It is a Beck Armley uh, and it is a very good kit. I've had a couple people tell me about it saying it's just as good as the, um, as the original Toyota brand. Uh, you can see uh, that's the part number 0440372. I got this off of Amazon. You can pretty much find this just about everywhere. I think AutoZone has it. Uh, I know Rock Auto has it, but the best price I found was Amazon. So I'll open it up and have you take a look at everything. Some of the different gaskets you need um, to do the service. These are uh, the gaskets for the plugs. There's two plugs in the pan. Um, these are typical aluminum crush gaskets, and that is a Toyota part. Uh, 35178 uh, I got this on eBay. I think I paid about $17.50 and I'm hoping they're original and not some Chinese knockoff that they just stuck a Toyota sticker on it. But we'll go with that. This one I know as a fact is the real part. Uh, this is the O-ring that goes on the fill plug that actually has a WS uh, logo on it. It's a world standard logo. And again, here is the part number. It's 9301. 15004 and it is a Toyota Lexus part um, and this will fit the car so really that's that's all you need in parts you just need enough fluid some washers and the filter kit so let's go ahead and open up the filter take a look at it take it out real quick and okay so you can see this is a filter it's got a brand new o-ring on it um, you can actually see down in there there's the filter media um, I've had a couple people online that this is just as good as the original quality um, so I figured I'd take a shot for about $32, this kit. And this gasket looks really beefy. It's got the type of channel that the instructions show. It comes with all these spacers that go in, and they look to be sort of zinc-coated metal. So, uh, you know, we'll uh, go through this. Looks like a good quality kit. As I mentioned, this is the first time I've ever had a car that they tell you not to do it. Um, but we're going to go ahead, and with the help of really good instructions, um, which, as I've said, uh, I've got... All the instructions for installation, removal, all of the torque specs. I mean, this is something that I guess if you want to take a swag at it, sure. But me personally, I think I like to have the instructions. And I'll, I'll give you some links to some pages where I pulled these from. Uh, I have used ChiltonDIY.com for years. Um, you don't get to, to keep the manual. You basically get a link that's online. But you can download and print the manuals. And these are all Chilton. DIYs. Um, I've also used eManual. I've downloaded it, paid for it. It was about 25 bucks. Um, they didn't give me a 2011 manual. I think they gave me a 2012, which shouldn't matter. Um, but I, I, it's not as organized as I'd like. I like the Chilton a lot better. Uh, you can print and save these as PDFs and for basically what the service work that you want to do. So um, you have your choice. You can either do Chilton's or eManual, whatever works for you. Um, and then we'll take a look at the tools and uh, we'll get going. Two of the key tools we're going to need um, is a transfer, fluid transfer pump. Um, this is a Pennzoil. I've already used it for doing my, the rear differential, cleaned it out, and I'm going to use it again today for the transmission fluid. 
Uh, this was a Home Depot purchase for about 10 bucks, and this has actually been a really good pump. The only other part that you have to need is kind of an odd part. This is a 24 millimeter short uh, socket, and I got this on eBay, uh, excuse me, on Amazon, and it calls it a oil fuel filter socket for 24 millimeter. Um, there is not a lot of room in there, and you'll see that shortly. Uh, to get into the uh, world standard fill plug. It is very, very narrow. Uh, the 24 millimeter I had was a half inch drive. This is a 3 8 As you can tell, I haven't taken it apart yet. So it, it's it's pretty straightforward like an automatic transmission should be. Nothing crazy. Um, it's just you got to take your time and make sure it's getting the fluid back in and doing the, the level check. That's where it's going to be fun. So, but we'll go through it. I'll videotape it. Hopefully this helps anybody and uh, let's get going. Okay, here we are finally under the car. Um, you can see lower control arm, lower control arm bushings. Here's your exhaust, down pipes and your exhaust. This aero pan, I'm going to take this out, this pan under here. Okay, so after about 20 minutes of fighting, uh, one of the plastic nuts on the aero pan, the one that was on this post right here, um, rounded out. Uh, plastic nut just completely rounded out. So. Took a little bit of fighting. I'm gonna have to replace it. But now you can see here is the transmission pan. Uh, nice and clean, looks real good. I've actually wiped it down last time I was under the car checking things out. You've got two drain pan uh, plugs. You've got this one here, and you've got this one. This one is the one that is your dipstick, essentially. Um, that's the one you can see it's got a hex head on it. That's the one that we're gonna be opening up to drain. We'll open both the drain. Um, but that's one that's got a tube in it, a little plastic tube that actually tells the level in the transmission. Um, so to kind of give you an idea what we have to do to pull all this apart. So you've got your down pipes here, and you've got some bolts that hold this bracket in place that run across. Bolts into the transmission, and then there's another bracket here. So once this bracket comes out, and it's not hard, I've taken it out once before, I PV blasted it a couple weeks ago. Um, once that's out, then you're ready to go because you can see some of the nuts for the pan or underneath it. There you go, right there. So, you know, to get the pan out, you have to take this bracket out. It's in the instructions too. But once you have that, that's that's the easy part. Now, let's kind of see if I can show you. Um, so here's the space you're working in to get to the drain plugs, or the fill plugs, excuse me. Fill plug. That's what we're going for. That's your world standard. You can actually see it's got a WS on it now. Uh, but you can see there really isn't a lot of room here. You've got heat shield, you've got the exhaust pipe. Um, you know, if it, it, when you do this to check the fluid, you're supposed to run the car till the transmission fluid gets to the right temperature. Um, so if you've got to fill this, it's going to be mighty hot down here. Um, so, you know, uh, it's going to be interesting. It's really, I get why they say it's not serviceable and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, then why do we have drain plugs? So let's go ahead and start taking all the brackets off. I wanted to kind of go through some of the bolts. The aero pan has four bolts on these little points here, um, and they're number 10s. And there's a couple points farther back besides these two. Um, the bolts back here, these, these, these guys, the, they were supposed to be 10s. One's a 14 or a 12, and one's a 10, but it all got rounded out. So once you get the aero pan out, it's all 10s. They all come out pretty easy. These big guys here, these are 14s. Um, so what we're going to do is try to make sure I have enough lights so you guys can see what I'm doing. They're, they've got a little bit of torque to them. Um, you got to break them officially. I'm going to run them out. There you go. Pretty good sized bolts. You can see they kind of hold a lot together. All right, now I'm going to go get some wrenches. We're going to start breaking these. Down pipe so, even though about two, three weeks ago I PB blasted these and took them off, they are not wanting to come off today. Um, so I've PB blasted them again. We got that one and the mess down there. And I'm going to let it sit for a few minutes and soak. And then we will do our best to try to get it off. Okay, with the amazing powers of PB blast, it actually came off. Uh, well, off, kind of. I got it hanging. This side loosened up enough that all I had to do was let it drop. So you can see the bracket hanging here. And now I have access to the three, three uh, pan bolts here. So the pan is basically free and clear at this point. And uh, let's go ahead and see how bad, how much damage I can do. Now that we've got everything out of the way of the pan, 
The worst thing you could do is drain it right now. The first thing you should be doing is opening up the fill plugs. Here's the thing. If you drain your pan and you can't get that plug open right there, that, that world standard plug, you are screwed. You cannot get fluid back into your transmission. So the most important thing you can learn from this is do not open the drain plugs. Do get that world standard plug right there. That guy right there, open if you can, if you can see it. That, that big guy right there. That has to come open. So now that's where we're using the special 24 millimeter um, wrench or socket, excuse me. And I tried this with a bigger one and I couldn't get the wrench and the socket up in here. So this is gonna be interesting. Okay, so loosened it up a little bit more. You can see some threads there. Sorry for blocking the light. It's kind of hard to, to do all this. Um, but yeah, it's it's loose. It's coming. And you can see it's it's just about to come out. Hopefully it's not going to leak fluid, I hope. Uh, but it's coming out. And there we go. I got it. And that's it. There's my fill. So you can see, just to kind of see it, there is an O-ring on there. So we're gonna replace that with the new one that I bought. Um, and you can see it actually says WS stamped on it for world standard. What I'm gonna do is to keep the, the inside of it clean, I'm gonna just put this back on and know that it's loose and just so we start messing with everything else. Well, after after a couple minutes of trying to thread that thing on, I, I got back on. So, wow, really no room in here. I mean, this is gonna be really, really difficult um, to fill if when the engine is warm and I have to add more fluid possibly, this exhaust pipe is going to cook me because the transmission has to be between, I believe, 95 and 103. So it's, it's going to be interesting to see how this goes. All right, so with the fill open, what we're going to do is we're going to do this one on the end first, this guy. That's a drain, but you can see it's kind of recessed. So you know there's fluid that's going to be sitting in the bottom of the pan. Even if I take the one with the tube in there it's still not going to drain so i'm going to hit this one first this is a 14 um so we're dripping out um, into the pan and it filled up in half the pan roughly so there's still a lot of fluid left again you know that drain pan is is recessed so there's a lot of pan of fluid left in the bottom of this pan so when you take it off you gotta be careful um i went ahead and put a new washer like i showed you guys it, uh, remember this, when you look at these washers, make sure you, they do have two different sides to them. So, real quick, um, there's a flat side and there's a side with sort of the, the rolled edge. You want the flat side to sit on the plug. So, to kind of give you an idea, you want the flatted side, flat side to sit on the back of the plug and the round side to go towards the pin. And what you do is when you take it off, you just double check it before you kind of throw everything everywhere. But that's how it goes back in. The round side faces up and that's what crushes when you put it onto the pan. So we'll go ahead and let it drip a little bit more to try to get every drop out so it doesn't spray in my face because I'm sure when we take this, it's going to be a, a bath for me. Uh, but we'll, uh, we'll get to the next um, step. Here we go. I've put this plug back in and torqued it to 15 foot-pounds like it says and it went back fine. I just screwed this one in with a brand new gasket. So these both have brand new gaskets. Uh, but I didn't torque it down because that's the one we're going to check when we check the fluid. So now what we're going to do is we're going to basically take all the side bolts off. What I want to do is the ones on that end, there's three down there. I'm going to loosen those, but I'm not going to take them off. We're going to take all the other ones off and have it drain this way down this side into the pan um, to create a nice waterfall of uh, transmission fluid into my face. So we'll see how this goes. I'm going to try to put you guys in a place that you can see it. And when it comes spraying, it doesn't cover my, my phone. So let's see if I can set you up. Okay, well, I've turned off the fan. So, um, so you guys can hear what I'm doing. <laughs> so hopefully I'm not blocking you, but you can see, I'm just gonna use a power driver 
to uh, take these guys out. I'm not sure how much to expect to come out of this thing, but like I said, these back three, all I'm gonna do is loosen them. Um, just crack them and just loosen them up a little bit. I don't want to, uh, I want it to be able to drop. And then I'll take them out by hand. All right, and of course there's always one that's gotta be a problem. There it is, all right. All right, and then there's one more in this corner. There we go. All right, so back three are loose. Let's start taking these guys out. Turn them up a little bit. There's one that's got to be a problem. I've loosened up all of them. I'm going to take these two on the end off. I'm going to try to set my pan as best I can. Got some spare rags because I'm sure it's going to be in my face. All right, first bolt. Okay, so far so good. Let's do the far ones first. All right, no problems so far. So they're all out. I'm going to take these two corner ones out. Now, I've seen online where they say that you have to sometimes break the gasket. Um, they have actually gasket breakers that you can wedge it in there. And I'm probably not just going to get a, I don't want to use a pry bar, but I'm going to get something. Let me, uh, let me go get maybe a flathead or something um, to try to break this gasket. So nothing's dripping yet, um, but I've got to crack it. I'm not sure what really to use without hurting it. Um, again, I don't want to, I don't want to break anything, but it is, when they say it's a sealed unit, they're not kidding. <laughs> This little pick. Oh yeah, there it is. It's starting. So, oh yeah. Now we can get one of these guys in here. Let's see. Oh boy, I can smell it now. There it is. Fluid. side a little bit and start to pry. Now all I'm using again is this little, it's a little Harbor Freight pick. It's a L pick and uh, it's doing it. It's separating it. Oh, there we go. Let's see if we can kind of do a little bin in here. Oh, there it is. Oh, 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 there we go. Got it. All right. Now, of course, if I'd done this right, which I didn't. Last one's out. Let's see how much we're going to lose. There we go. It's actually really clean. I got to tell you guys, it's got a little funky smell to it. I'll give it that. But it is, it's not cherry red, it's brownish. But it, uh, 
it uh it's pretty clean i mean it, it's uh it's, it's brown it's but it's but it's see-through at least oh there we go and there we go it's off uh, i just want to try to capture as much of the fluid as i can so we can measure it i don't want to lose anything well, I'll be honest with you guys, that is the most electronic looking transmission that I've ever seen in all the years I've worked on cars. And I've been working on cars for a little bit. So, i got a little fluid left in the pan. I'm going to have to try to dump it in this thing after we put the filter in. But, uh, but yes, it is off. And uh, it's a little funky. But it's, uh, it wasn't that bad. Again, very difficult. Lots, not a lot of room under here. Uh, if you have a, if you got a post lift, you will have a much easier time doing this. You're on jack stands, everyday, you know, home mechanic. You're gonna have fun. All right, let's get this pan out and take a look at it. So I thought I'd give you a, a close up of what everything looks like. Um, it's all very clean. I mean, it really is. Um, there's your filter, and a lot more wires than I've ever seen in my life inside of a. Transmission, but again, I worked on a lot of old cars Again, the fluid's not bad. It's it's brownish. It's not cherry red like new um, But what I'm going to do is I am going to go through and torque all of these to the right spec So I'm going to change take the filter out I'm going to go through and we're going to torque up all of the throttle body bolts um, just to make sure they're good and we'll put the new filter in and uh, we will start to put everything back together. Let's take so a look at the pan. Here we are outside the car. And uh, not bad, you can see the magnets. They're, they're, they're kind of fuzzy. They've got some stuff on them. Um, they're not clean in any way, shape or form. And there is the tube. That is your dipstick. Um, it's not like dipstick tubes I've seen in other videos of other Toyotas. Um, I really would have thought you could put a uh, uh, an Allen wrench on that and take it out. Um, that was something I suppose everybody said you could do. But you can see there's the uh, drain plug. Um, so there is some fluid that's in the bottom of this. So what we're going to do is we're going to peel the gasket off carefully uh, and get out these metal inserts. Uh, we're going to take the magnets out and you can see, just to give you an idea, they've got some stuff on them and I'm sure that's normal. But it's, it's, it's pretty thick. Yeah, that's uh, some thick stuff. And we'll clean those up. And the bottom of the pan it's not bad. I mean, it's still red, um, but you can see that's what came off my finger. So yeah, it's got some fines on it, um, but we'll also see if we can get this to come out and how you take it out just to see, because it looks like it might be threaded, but we'll go ahead. We'll, um, we'll get into this and clean it up. Okay. So now for the filter, the, uh, there's four bolts, two on this side and two on this side, if I can get to it, there they are. One, two, and they're 10 millimeter, so nothing crazy. Same thing, grab our trusty power ratchet. We'll hit this back one first. but we'll see. All right, let's see which side. I think it's this side. Nope, it's the back. Okay, so uh, the front. This is the front, sorry. We're gonna just try to grab it and wiggle it out. And, oh boy, not coming easy. And I knew there'd be fluid dripping. But it should be just kinda pop it. And, I, and there's a tube with O-ring, and yeah, that's why I pulled the pan back. It's all dripping. There it comes. Ready? Oh, there we go. And I knew I had to, oh, it's all over. Yes, missed it by a tenth of an inch. Fantastic. All right, well, so, <laughs> I kind of expected that. That was one of those things that, you know, let's just say, yeah, missed it. But uh, yeah, uh, so reminder for everybody, when you pull off the filter, make sure your pan is under it or you'll have this. All right, so let me go clean myself up here and uh, we'll go on to the next step. Okay, after spreading a tad of oil dry to kind of pick up my mess, 
I kind of noticed something that uh, is a big, could be a massive faux pas or a massive problem. If you see here, the O-ring actually stayed inside the housing. So uh, that's something you want to get out. You need to yeah, see that? That could have been catastrophic if I hadn't noticed that. So yeah, make sure you check the housing for the O-ring to come out. That could be really bad. So here we are, everything's out. Um, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna get the torque specs for all the bolts of the throttle body. And I'm just gonna go around and double check to make sure that they're torqued properly. And then um, we will go ahead and put the new filter in and uh, move forward. Okay guys, so we're getting ready to put the new filter in. So here's the filter. And I wanted to just always match it up. You should always just kind of lay it side by side. Um, and you can see this one has some writing on it. This one doesn't get an aftermarket, but you can see the parts line up. I mean, everything about them look practically identical. I mean, other than the writing on it, this one has a part number here. That one is nothing, but the connections look correct completely and totally. So looking at the two side by side, you can see they, uh, they look pretty good. Yeah. But otherwise, they look exactly the same. So, so right, this Beck Arnley kit is probably identical. I mean, even the media looks, even though that's full of transmission fluid, even the media, the sizes and everything look really, really good. So let's go ahead and get this one in. So just as a reminder, you know, it's really important to have instructions to kind of work you through everything. Again, nothing too hard, but, uh, you know, coat the O-ring with fluid. But here's, you know, one of the things, no, it's ensured that it's not twisted or pinched. But there's the four bolts, but here's the important part. Your torque spec, eight foot-pounds. Like the instructions said, you know, the, the new O-ring, which this one already came seated on, should have a, a little coating of, of transmission fluid. So I'm, I'm not using fresh. I'm using the stuff that came out of here. But you got to remember, we're not taking all of the fluid out. We're taking a good portion of it, but not all of it. And, uh, you know, you can use fresh if you want to open the bottle and take it out of there. But, you know, for what we're doing, um, there's still going to be a good portion of it. So... Here we are just kind of coating the O-ring so it doesn't get torn and stuck and rip when you put it in. So it's good to kind of make sure all the sides are coated. Make sure it's seated right on the bottom of that lip so when it goes in it has a good fit. And everything is nice and sealed properly and it gets good suction. So let's go ahead and get this one in. Okay, so here we are back into the car. We've got our filter. Just crawling over to it. Okay, so we're going to basically put the end of the filter into the, into the fitting, which you can see it right there. Just kind of slide it in. And the O-ring is already in place. You can see everything lines up, but you got to kind of push it in. There it goes. All right, so that's in there. Or is it? That's a good question. Feels like it's in there. Right. And the other one came out with a little bit of fiddling. This one feels like it's having a little bit of an issue here. So let me turn you off and I will see what's going on. So basically here's the thing. The, to get the end in with the fitting with the O-ring, you have to kind of shimmy it back and forth while pressing. Hard to do with one hand. Um, but once it goes, you'll feel it kind of just pop in, suck in, whatever you want to call it, and you'll see it should, it should stand on its own. It's still not closed. There's still gaps over here, um, you know, in between, but, but it's standing on its own. So now you should be able to thread the four bolts and start socking it up to inch eight foot-pounds. We're going to go ahead and pick up these magnets. And they're, they're, uh, they've got material on them. You can see. Let me go ahead and... We're going to go ahead and clean these magnets, the three magnets. They're all sticking together, but you can see, you know, they're a uh, pretty significant amount of stuff. But for 60,000 miles, that's probably normal wear. Um, you know, it's, it's uh, fines. It's a lot of fines. And actually, in the instructions that I have, it tells you what you should see in the pan, um, you know, between brass and metal. And this is probably, based on what the instructions say, this is probably right. Uh, it looks fine. I'm probably just going to use a little brake cleaner and clean them up. So I'll give you a sort of a before and after real quick. Shot a brake clean and a, and a lot of rubbing with some shop rags. All of that 
pretty much came off and turned them into this. So these, you can see both sides are really clean. If I can turn them over. Oh boy, they're flipping each other over. It's, it's, these are very strong magnets. Make sure you get the ends too. The ends are actually um, holding a lot of material. I was surprised at how much the ends did. But yeah, just they're, they're uh, just straight up black magnets. So they got a lot of strength to them. But they're all cleaned up. Um, you can see, you know, before and after that they're uh, looking pretty good. All right, so now we're going to go on and start cleaning the pan. Again, going back to the instruction kit, um, basically it says put the magnets in, install a new gasket in the pan, and, nine, and then install the nine bolts. Now before you do that, obviously, you have to kind of go through. And again, to give you some detail of this instruction booklet, it explains to you how this gasket should be seated. So you can see the correct way how it should be rounded out, sitting flat on the inside of the lip from the inside. is before you put the gasket onto the pan, even though it's laying here, I'm going to try to put these spacers into each one of these holes. I don't know which way they go, if they go from the bottom to the top, top to the bottom. Um, I'm trying it from the bottom to the top and it just seems to slip in pretty easy. So all I'm going to do is go around from one to the next, just sliding them in. I don't think there's a specific way they go. Um, they both seem to be flat on both sides. You figure they're going to be meshed up against the transmission body and on the pan. So all I'm doing is just slide them in. So we'll go around and do them all and then we'll uh, put the gasket on. Also put in the magnets. So I have the magnets here. I'll just grab one of them. You can see there's spots in here. And if I remember correctly, I believe they look like that. But again, if I wasn't sure, I could go back to my instruction booklet. And the instruction booklet actually shows you how they should be lined up. Obviously, they should be lined the long way, front to back. So exactly how I have it like that, front to back. So if you weren't sure, you go back to your instructions. So same thing. Put in the pin between the two marks. And just lay them in there. And there you go, you've got your magnets in. Probably the last thing to do just to make sure everything's all set right is just give it a good wipe down. We're gonna go ahead and install the pan. I've carefully put the gasket in and I'm gonna rotate it the correct way. That always helps. I gotta get the butts in the Okay, so. 65 inch pounds. What we're going to do is try to thread one of the back bolts. First thing is make sure the surface is clean. And a little bit of transmission fluid has kind of leaked over the time I've been cleaning everything up. So you want to make sure the edges are clean. You want a good mating surface between the pan gasket and the transmission body. You don't want it all messed up with stuff. Make sure if you're using a rag, like a shop rag like I am, that it doesn't drop little red fuzzies everywhere like mine is doing. But okay, so I've got that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just try to gently raise the pan up to get it close. And I'm going to try to get a couple of bolts in by hand without really flexing the gasket too much. Okay, that's one. Alright. I'm trying to get this far side. That's two.
you get a couple in place, then it can kind of hang on its own. You can start to work your way around carefully. Just make sure you thread everything by hand. Don't, don't really try to use a, a power gun to get them in. Really just take your time and hand thread everything. Get them. Uh, I'm going to use my torque wrench which I am laying on. Okay. I'm use a torque wrench. We're going to start in the back here. Um, again, 65 inch pounds is not a lot. I'm just going to go ahead and start just tightening them down slowly. Okay. Here it is, 65. I'm going to do the two ends first, and then I'll probably jump to the other side and then work my way to the middle. And I kind of remember with a pan gasket, you maybe want to go up the edges. Okay. To make sure it seats right. Because I think if you go jump to the far end, the pan, the gasket can actually like crinkle in the middle. Okay, so we've hit them all, they're all at 65, just double checking one click, make sure I didn't miss any. And there you go. You now have pan cleaned, magnets cleaned, filter changed, gaskets in. So remember, this plug is still loose. This is the check plug. This one has is, is, uh, been socked down with a new gasket. This has a new gasket in it. I just haven't socked it down to the right, this one's at the right torque specs. This has not been socked down to torque specs. So um, that's one thing just to keep in mind. I'm leaving this one loose for now. I'll probably tighten it a little bit um, just so that when we start to fill it, it doesn't come out. And that way when we do the check, um, it should be okay. So just going to give it a quick wipe down, get some of the, maybe the grease or oil that I had on my legs or anything off. But you should be able to look around the edges of the pan and see that the gasket is, is made it up nice and flat to that edge. It's not curled. It's not sticking underneath. If you did everything right, it should be right in there and shouldn't have any problems. Um, and I guess we're going to find out um, if I've done this right. So let's go to the next step. So when you want to refill the transmission, um, the instructions are obviously something that you really need to get an idea of how much fluid you need. So this is one of the instructions that I've gotten from uh, e-manuals, which is supposedly in a Toyota original. gives you an idea. Um, and here you can see if you do a transmission drain, the pan and drain plug removal, just a straight up plug, it's a little over three and a half quarts. So on the second page, if you are doing a full valve body removal, it's almost five quarts. But if you take the whole thing apart with a torque converter, you can almost be a little over seven. So we need about six quarts of fluid um, without, well, we're not really removing the valve body. So it's between five and six. Um, we'll see what we what it comes up to be when we measure the uh, catch pan. Okay, guys. So we've got the filter in. We've got the pan on with the gasket. Everything's ready to get filled. But the question is, is how much? So if you remember when we took the filter off, I lost a little bit on the floor. Um, but the rest of it, I pretty much got in this pan. So the good thing is, is when you, when you do this kind of work, you want to make sure you have some sort of pan that's got some sort of measurements in it. Um, Mine does in the back. You can see right there, it says five quarts. And we're, we're right on that five quart line. Um, so I'm going to, it's just under it. So if I put that little bit that I lost in there, I'm going to say we're five quarts uh, 
out. So that, that's the hardest part on this, is once you, get, once you get the fluid pumped in, you have to check it. And that's the fun part with these, these Toyota Lexus transmissions. There is no more dipstick. Um, that, if you remember that check plug on the side, you basically have to let the transmission warm up and then open the check plug when it reaches the right temperature. And anything that dribbles out is excess, um, and then you close it up and you're done. But that's the hard part, because you have to have it running. So you have your car up on jack stands, you want to get it started, you got to wait for you to do a little sequence, which I'll show you. We're going to try. Um, and you go from there. But for right now, I think we're going to try to pump five quarts into the transmission. So let's do pumping. Okay, guys. Um, just a couple things. Did them already. I have went ahead and put in the um, downpipe bolts and the two transmission bracket bolts. Um, so it's the four. It's the two downpipes. One over here, right there, and then one over here. These are 29 foot-pounds. The transmissions uh, bolts are 32 foot-pounds. So didn't want to bore you with that, but I put those in before we even started filling it. Uh, I'm basically following the instructions um, from Toyota directly. So the next part is, is we're now going to have fun trying to ske squeeze ourselves up in here and start filling this guy up with five quarts. So on to filling. Okay, for the next step, you're going to need your pump and your transmission fluid. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the pump up. We're going to put it into the fill plug and just start pumping. One of the most important things for this pump is to know which is in and which is out. Out is the one that's going to go inside the transmission because you want the fluid to go in from the bottle out into the transmission. So make sure you know which way this goes. On this particular siphon, out is the bottom. So we're going to go crawl under the car and put this into the fill. Okay, here we are under the car with the hose. We're going to try to snake it in. And you're just going to try to put it into the fill on the side. Not easy, again, with not a lot of space, but that's what you got to do. So, once you get it in there, you put the other end of the bottle and start pumping. Okay, so there is the line inside the transmission. I'm going to put the other end in the bottle of transmission fluid and we'll see how it goes. Okay, so here we are. I've got the fluid open. I'm just basically putting it right inside to the bottom of the bottle. It's in there all the way. And then what we're going to do is we're going to try to slowly pump this and try to do it with one hand, which is going to be really tough. Court. You can see I'm trying to get those last little bits in there. It's five quarts pumped in. I just got to kind of tilt the bottle and get a little bit more out of it. I want to try to, you always want to try to get the whole quart in if you can. Especially if you took out five, let's put in five. The question is did you put in enough? Did you put in too much? And that's where the next step comes. So since these transmissions don't have dipsticks, everybody kind of panics about how do I check the fluid? Well, Toyota's come up with the most ingenious way to do a check of your fluid. Um, and that kind of comes into play with the, the little straw that we saw on the bottom of the pan. Um, as you can tell, I'm trying to get the last little bits. That's pretty much it. I think that's all I'm going to get in. I mean, I could do another quart or a little bit of another quart, but I think we're just going to call it a day. didn't put enough fluid in the car, because remember, we had five, almost five quarts exactly, plus what I dumped on the floor. I've almost got five quarts out of this. There's probably a little bit in the bottom of this bottle. I'll probably take a six quart and just do a little pump out of it, just to give it a little bit more than, than five, just to have enough. Since we're going to go ahead and we're going to open up this this plug over here, that plug will come and let fluid come out if you have too much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit more than five in, just a little bit, 
open up a fifth, a sixth quart and just put some in. And then we'll go ahead and we'll get ready to start the car up and um, do the measurement process. And I'll show you how to jump the pins. I'm going to be doing this for the first time myself again. And we'll go from there. Okay, so all you're going to do is really going to get in here with a pick, get up underneath the old gasket, and just peel it off. And that's it. Real easy. Um, take the new one. There it is, new O-ring. So again, just something that's kind of belt and suspenders to the whole project, just making sure that if you're gonna go through all the pain and effort of tearing your transmission apart and changing your screen, you might as well put in all new gaskets. So that one's ready to go back on the car. Okay guys, this is the hardest part. All right, so we're gonna to try to fit this thing up in here and get it in. I'm gonna try one-handed, they're probably not gonna work. Okay guys, so this fill plug right there is 29 foot-pounds if you're not using the special tool from Lexus Toyota. So I'm going to try to fit my torque wrench in there and with the 24 millimeter socket and get it to 29. Now just one So one of the things in the instructions that kind of tells you is that the fluid temperature has to be relatively below 95 degrees right here, this first one. And um, if it's over 108, you, you can't do the testing. So this was the part of um, the testing that I just couldn't get to work. So the idea is you're supposed to go to the OBD2 uh, plug and jump between 4 and 13, those two pins. When you jump those, you follow this sequence. If you're not using TechStream, which I wasn't, um, you follow this sequence by jumping the pins and then essentially what you're going to do is you're going to switch the gears. Let me show you this. You're going to switch the gears back and forth. So I kind of called it like a Nintendo game. Um, and I went back and forth. And the idea is, is on the dashboard, the neutral is supposed to start to flash. Well, when I jumped the pins, the dashboard just started flashing like crazy. And I never got this to come on. So I had to kind of back up and punt and try a different plan. Now this set of instructions came from the Chilton DIY. You can see here the information, even though it looks different, it is the same between 35 and 108. So, you know, depending on which type of instructions you want to get, um, they are all exactly the same to give you an idea. There's the same jumper uh, uh, setting between four and 13. And it basically tells you how to move the shift lever back and forth between the N and D every one and a half seconds for six seconds. And when that happens, see, there's the same picture. Um, so they really do when they create these manuals, even though the first one I showed you was uh, e-manuals, this one is uh, Chilton DIY. They do, look, they, they basically give the same information regardless of how you want to do it. Um, the only thing is sometimes you get something like this, be over it, but it does tell you between 95 and 108 to be able to get the proper reading. I wasn't lucky enough for that to work. I mean, that's what's supposed to happen is the indicator light P turns on. That's supposed to tell you what's going on. And mine never did this. My whole dashboard went crazy. So the idea is, is to jump the pins, um, go through the little Nintendo game with the shifter. When the parking light comes on, that means it's reach temperature and you're supposed to pull out the drain plug with the um, straw. And if any fluid comes out, that's the overflow, and then you close it up and you're done. But that didn't happen for me. Since I didn't have the sensor inside the transmission for the temperature to tell me what it was, I ended up using an infrared gun to shoot the pan to get an idea of what the temperature was. And I just made a simple decision that if it was the pan was between 95 and 108, and I said about 105, that would mean the fluid has got to be above 95. Um, so that's how I did that. So you'll see in the video next of where I got the infrared gun and I was um, reading the pan. Okay guys, so here we are. Kind of had a little bit of a snafu here. So I tried using the, the instructions and uh, didn't really work. Um, I'm trying to get a good reading on this and it says it's about 96. Now this isn't really the right way to do it, 95. Um, I'll explain to you in a minute. 
I'm trying to get a good reading on this. I'm going to wait until it reaches temperature. About 100 degrees, I'm going to open it up. I, I'll explain everything. It's really just kind of, I'm scrambling right at this moment, to be very honest with you. Um, the method where you put the jumpers through the OBD2 port sensor uh, and jump it to try to get um, it into sensor mode for the transmission sensor didn't work. I tried it three times, I jumped the right ports, I used the right couple different pieces of wire, it doesn't work. So. Go ahead and open this plug up and just watch the exhaust manifold. Obviously, incredibly warm. And of course, don't have gloves on. So, here we go. It's going to be really, really hot. Remember, not the can underneath. Now, the scary thing is, if nothing comes out, I got a problem. Oh, I don't have enough in there. I mean, that's what the problem is, guys. If you don't fill it enough, you are going to have issues. So you can see that running through all the gears, even five plus quarts, nothing coming out. So I did not put enough in there. So I can wait for it to get a little bit warmer just to be safe. But it's showing 105 on the panel, so I know the fumes are going to be warmer. So, I'm going to close it up, let it cool down, and fill it more. Okay guys, let me give you a quick update. Um, so, when we opened up the check pl fl fill plug and nothing came out, that pretty much means there isn't enough fluid in the transmission. So, I waited for the transmission to cool down, I pumped in another quart that would make six quarts, and I've waited for the transmission to cool enough. So now. Instead of using the method where you use the dashboard lights and everything else, which it's just not working for me, I jumped the two ports in the instructions and it, all I got were a lot of flashing lights in the dashboard, but I could not, even going through the, uh, the gear selector, following the instructions directly, getting it, the neutral to go blank. It would not go blank. I ended up using a uh, temperature gun. Since we have to be between 95 and 108, I waited until it was like 101, 102 on the pan. I assume the fluid's a little hotter. Opened it up, nothing came out. So we've added a quart, so we're up to six. We're about, it's cool enough. We're about to start it up again and put it through some gears and go ahead and warm up the temperature. Here we go. So now we're gonna take the gear selector and go through the gears. Again, this is just to try to get the fluid moved around through the transmission. I'm going to go back through one more time to make sure it's all fully moving around. And I tried doing this before, but it wouldn't change, change gears, but that's right. Back up. All right. With that done, we shall hop out of the car and go take some temperature readings. Okay, here we are back onto the car again. And uh, we're done. Let's get it started up and let's see what we got. Go ahead and open it up before it gets too hot and see if we get anything out. So here we go. Eye number two. And oh, there 
we go. Now I know I have too much fluid. So, all right, I feel better. Now I know I have enough fluid in it. Once this starts to go to a trickle, you close it up, you sock it down to 15 foot pounds. Yeah, so I wasted some fluid, I know. But I think I'd rather have enough than to, uh, excuse me, enough than not enough. So wow, that's a lot more than I thought. That's probably almost the whole point. <laughs> so. That's what I was going to call the breaking action. Alright, so tap it up and I'll torque that and we'll call it done. Well, put about 20 miles on it and nothing's leaking. Everything is all done. The car runs great, so I think we are done. Just going to look under the car to make sure we don't have any leaks. As you can see, up in the aero panel, there's nothing wet. Everything looks pretty good. It's a little toasty because I just came back. There's one of the plugs. So I think we are done. That is the transmission service for a 2011 ISF. I hope I helped everybody. Uh, I hope you guys can try some of your own stuff. Have fun and enjoy.